Hello and welcome to the 10th in a set of tutorials for XFX Toolkit version 2, now with added object tracking. If you haven't got the plugin pack installed, please follow the link below. We're going to move to the last sets of plugins, fixes and forced resolutions. We'll start off with Alpha Adjust and if I drop it onto a clip on the timeline, absolutely nothing happens because because we're not adjusting the alpha. So if I go to the inspector and just start to move the alpha, you can see on the right hand side here, we're getting the checkerboard. And that means that's transparent and you can set that in the Final Cut Pro 10 timeline. Normally it should be black, but to show this, I'm doing it on transparent. Probably better if I just scale the alpha back. So we're moving and scaling the alpha signal completely separately to the fill, to the lady pouring the pint. And we have also can control the scale. So if you've got uh, an object you're trying to cut out like a logo, maybe a square logo or something like that, you can move that. So it's completely independent of the actual um, video, which is really handy. It's quite difficult to do otherwise on there. Now you can you can use this for cutting out graphics or something like that, but you can also be a bit more adventurous and use it for some creative purposes because not only have we got a rotation control, but if I duplicate the clip and put one on top of another, you can quite quickly build up quite a good effect. So if I just dim that one down, go into maybe color correct it slightly and pull the exposure down. So you can see we're building up a, a kind of patchwork of, of pictures built from the same image, but with different cutouts. So it's a very flexible plugin. And when it was built, to be honest with you, I just thought it was a way of kind of like fixing logos and cutting around things. But I've used it for a lot more than that, as there's a lot of control and you can do some really nice things with it. And you can also blur the edges, etc. You can make something look really good with just a few clicks. The next two plugins are similar because they address the red, the green and the blue channels independently. So let's drop the first one on, which is Channel Swap. And as you can see, nothing happens until I go into the inspector. And you can see we can make uh, the red channel green and we can make the green channel blue, for example. And that gives us a kind of like an instant cross processing effect, which I quite like as well. Um, but it's a way of getting the different color channels to go to the different color channels. And you can pump anything you like. You can actually say make the blue channel the alpha. And then you can see we've got that cut out. Um, it's a bit severe. Uh, you probably might want to have a good play with that. But a great way to rearrange the channels. I mean, if you have to pull the alpha up and output the alpha, it's a great because you can just make the red, the green and the blue alpha and then you'll just get the white signal coming out of the timeline. Let me delete that and we'll go and put RGB channel adjust on here. Again, very similar, it addresses the red, the green and the blue, but you have control over each so you can say how much red, green or blue goes in. So that's the red going up and down. And you can also offset the channel. So this is the red channel going out by horizontally. You can see that. You can rotate it and also you can scale it and blur it. So it's kind of pretty good for creating aberration effects, uh, you know, dream sequences or even just fixing something like a really old camera that's got some really bad registration. You just need to get it back in on there again same for green channel and the blue channel and you can you can tweak to your heart's content to make a variety of effects on there on to the white and black cruncher and it's a way of getting extra contrast in um, a video image without exceeding broadcast levels but what i'm going to do i'm going to need the waveform open for this one as you can see we have 100 percent white here zero black down here it looks like that's the t-shirt let me drop the black and white cruncher and immediately we've crushed the blacks on here, push the whites up and clip those. And you can see the punch it's given on the um, on the video. It almost looks like uh, 5D footage straight out without um, being recorded flat. I've got some controls in the inspector. We can crunch the blacks even more, lift them, and we can do the same with the white, push the whites off the scale, but clip those and we can bring those down and they clip them as well. So if you need a bit more contrast and you don't want to use the color corrector, you can just put the white and black cruncher on it and that will give you this look straight off. On to the white limiter and that does a similar thing to the white and black cruncher, but only works on the whites. Now let me show you on the timeline, I have this clip, but I've color corrected it. So the whites have gone above a hundred 
And if we were to drop a broadcast safe filter on, it would bring the whites down to 100, but it would also affect the other area of um, whites to mid grays. It would bring those down as well. Whereas with the white limiter, it just chops everything off, as you can see, at 100% on there so it keeps the look of all the kind of mid grays but makes everything broadcast safe on there the last fixer i want to show you is actually in the title so if we go to the title inspector we can see we've got vertical video fixer it was titled pillar box shoulders and it's been there right from the word go with this plugin pack and it fixes vertical video and you can see loads of controls. We've got some text, so you can put a quick courtesy on there. Controls for video brightness, and you can move the panels around, flop the panel over, and control the blur. One thing to notice here is with a lot of controls in motion, sometimes if you move them, they don't go past a number, and that's how motion works. But if you actually drag on the number, you can get a bigger effect sometimes. Always worth seeing what you can do by dragging on the numbers. On there and also last but not least we have a broadcast safe filter um, so you can make sure that the iPhone or phone footage is going to be broadcast safe and it can go straight to air because normally you're going to end up doing something like this quite quickly if you work in a news channel I'll quickly touch on the force fix resolution plugins and what they do is they force an item or a compound clip to be a fixed resolution so this is all 1080 that I'm working in. So if I take the 486 SD plugin and drop that on, it instantly makes that item go into the resolution 486. And as you can see, standard definition is obviously four by three. So that's why we've got the black either side. Sometimes when you're building things up with compound clips, you need to keep the resolution of a compound clip or force it to be a compound clip so things don't scale. And that's a way of doing it using these different plugins, which go from you know 486 lines right up to 4K and UHD. The next effect I'm going to show you is an effect. It's a generator, and therefore you can find it in the generators under XFX Toolkit, and it's called blank frame. Now, why would you want a blank frame? Well, sometimes when you do a transition from a secondary storyline to a primary storyline, it doesn't really work out as you expect. And this applies to some of the built-in transitions and some third-party transitions. So one I know doesn't work is clothesline. So if I drop that onto the end here and move this, you can actually see the outgoing is fine. So we've got the glider going, the close-up of the glider going off, but we've actually got the background twice. You've got the background coming in and also the background on the background, and we don't want this. So that's where blank frame comes in. You can get a bit fiddly trying to get it into a secondary storyline. Now we've got a little gap clip in there, which we can delete. And now you can see that the glider goes off and there's no glider coming in. So that's an easy way to do a transition off a secondary storyline without affecting the video underneath. And that was the last in a series of 10 videos on XFX Toolkit 2 with object tracking, especially for Final Cut Pro 10. Check out the other nine to learn a bit more about the other plugins in the pack.